it suddenly occurred to me that you are the first couple that I've ever done this particular experiment to. We're basically doing three different experiments for you. We're going to have you in the machine and try and record what's going on in the brain when you think sexual thoughts about each other. Um, a second experiment in which we, you are thinking only romantic thoughts about each other. And the third, when you're thinking thoughts of deep attachment. And then we're going to see how these three brain systems interact. What I and my colleagues have done so far is study only romantic love. And you are the first couple in which I'm studying all three brain systems. And in fact, I might even make a few predictions on what I think I'll find. And yeah, I'm happy to tell you. Oh, no, please do. <laughs> but, uh, Hi, I'm Dr. John Gray, author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. People have not figured out how to make it work. So if something doesn't work, then why bother? And particularly, that's the way men think. In the beginning, it's kind of naive love. It's kind of a glimpse of what love is. We just sort of fall in love. We see them. But to really grow in love and discover real love, we have to put forth sacrifice at times. And we also have to forgive. Almost everyone who gets married has their heart broken several times, where you thought your partner was going to be there and they're not. But when you can heal that broken heart and love your partner even though they're not perfect, that's real love. Because when you're living with somebody for a lifetime, they have the ability to remember your every mistake. And you don't want to come home to somebody who doesn't love you more because of your mistakes. We're both very excited about your adventure. That's true. And what a great thing to do. Uh, doctors, John and Julie Gottman. Um, <laughs> what advice can you give the young, naive, newlywed couple setting up ah, on this extreme adventure? Goodness gracious. Um, have mics attached to your helmets so you can talk the entire way. Well, I, I was thinking about your adventure, uh, and I think the most important thing is for you to continue having adventures together. Mm -hmm. and. This sounds like it's just a, a recipe for great friendship. Uh, exploring and adventuring together and taking time to really be with each other and talk to each other. And my advice would be for him to find out what your dreams are and honor those during this trip. I'm Eric Hosel, the founder and president of scientificmatch.com, which is the first dating service in the world to match people according to their DNA in order to achieve actual chemistry among our matches. These are the three genes that scientists speculate uh, code for our natural body odor fingerprint. They call it our odor fingerprint because this, the theory is that we each have a natural body fragrance that is as unique as our fingerprints. These are the test kits to determine your genetic compatibility. Okay, so. Uh, okay, I'll give that to you. Sounds good. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Put Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank great. You. great to meet you. Great, great to meet you too. too. <laughs> and let's see then if, uh, if, if you guys think that we're genetically compatible. Absolutely. My name is Dr. Judith Wallerstein, and uh, I'm known for having studied the effects of divorce on children for many years. And one fine day I decided that I really wanted to take a look at what goes into a happy marriage. So I undertook to study happy marriages. And instead of giving people a mental health definition of what a happy marriage is, like if you have sex twice a week or whatever, I, my goal was to find couples who had been married at least nine years because divorce, 80% of divorces occur by the eighth year of marriage. People with children, because all of my work had been with families with children, and people where the man said, this is one heck of a marriage, and the lady said, this is one heck of a marriage, and they were talking about the same marriage. Uh, my name is Pepper Schwartz. I have a PhD in sociology from Yale, and I'm, the, uh, I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Washington and the relationship advisor for perfectmatch.com. Top tips for newlyweds. Uh, one is uh, don't let your parents get in the way. That would be my first one. You really are the couple now, and you, you want to be kind to them, but you have to get your act together. Um, do not take liberties with this relationship to say anything you feel like. 
This is the one that has to go the longest. This is the time you should shut your mouth and reconsider um, how you say and what you say. I would say never be dishonest, but never be, um, never take license with someone that you owe respect and, and kindness to. My name is Stephanie Kuntz, and I'm a professor of history at the Evergreen State College. I also am the director of research at the Council on Contemporary Families. I've been studying family history since it was a very unrespectable field. It's so easy for the woman to do all the caregiving, to be the social secretary. Uh, it's so easy to assume that men don't like to do this and that women do like to do that. Uh, and I think that whenever you can rock that comfort zone a little bit and purposely play with those old roles, you may find some things that really are beneficial. For example, I haven't touched laundry in 20 years. <laughs> I'm uh, Dr. Daniel Weil. I'm a couples therapist. Um, I've been doing couple therapy since the 70s. And I've written three books on couple relationships and couple therapy. Perfect. Would you like to take a little issue between the two of you and have me show you what I would do with it? Yes. Okay, so now what I want to do is to speak for you and to talk about it in terms of your feelings that I'm going to make a guess at, which might be more persuasive. We'll see. Okay. So I'm you talking to you, okay. and I'd say, I don't think I've gotten across to you about how abandoned I feel, about how, you know, this is the time when I just want it to be you and me and for us to settle together, and how, you know, there's like a sword crashing through, interrupting that, when I can't get you to come to bed and leave the iPhone. Well, where's that right? Where's that wrong? What's, what, what's a better way to put it? Perfectly, perfectly succinct. That's exactly okay. how I feel. So I am Dr. Diana Wiley and I've been doing this couples counseling, some individual work as well, for some 28 years. I love what I do. So I have some couples that say, oh, Dr. Wiley, thank you so much because the woman will say, I wasn't in the mood, I was exhausted. Sometimes I have, uh, especially with younger couples with children, uh, they have two syndromes, the D-I-N-S syndrome, which is double income, no sex syndrome, and the T-T-F-S syndrome, which is too tired for sex. But actually, couples that have sex do feel better afterwards. 